Hello, my name is Joe Sosnowski. This is Lecture 3 of Semester 1, Wisdom in Israel, where we will be studying the Old Testament wisdom books. This lecture is on the book of Proverbs, chapters 10 through 31. Let's begin with the Holy Spirit prayer. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. The books for this semester, Proverbs, Habakkuk, Job, Ecclesiastes, Sirach, and the Book of Wisdom. This week we'll finish our study of Proverbs. A common structure for Proverbs is taken from Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1 which says, Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. This is artwork from the St. John's Bible for the book of Proverbs. The seven columns are pillars. Wisdom is also described as the tree of life in Proverbs and stylized here. Wisdom provides a firm foundation to build upon, symbolized by a city built on the column. Lady Wisdom is described as setting up a banquet, inviting those seeking wisdom to eat. Here we have the bread and wine, which also symbolize the Eucharist and Christ, our true wisdom. I want to thank St. John's Bible for granting me permission to use this image. These seven columns are seen as seven smaller collections of wisdom literature that were combined and edited into a larger book of Proverbs. Each smaller collection is identified with a verse introducing the Proverbs given here. We studied the first pillar last week, chapters 1 to 9, the Proverbs of Solomon, and we will study the rest next week. Last week's readings from chapter 1 to 9, there seemed to be a unity to them. But for most of Proverbs, this unity seems to be lacking. It often just seems like a random collection of short, pithy sayings. The name for this literary form is aphorism, a very short, terse saying expressing a general truth or astute observation, frequently expressed using poetic parallelism where a thought is expressed, then the same idea is expressed again in a parallel verse but using different words and images. We call this synonymous parallelism. Or, its opposite is expressed, which we call antithetic parallelism. In Proverbs 10.10, 10, we read, He who winks at a fault causes trouble, but he who frankly reproves promotes peace. A short, pithy statement expressing a general truth, using antithetic parallelism. Some additional literary forms, less common, you will see this week are Riddle. A riddle is a statement or question having a hidden meaning put forth as a puzzle to be solved. In Proverbs, riddles are typically presented as numeric statements. The numeric saying, or the numeric statement. An example from this week is in chapter 30, verse 21 to 23. Under three things the earth trembles. Yes, under four it cannot bear up. Under a slave when he becomes a king, and a fool when he is glutted with food. Under an odious woman when she is wed, and a maidservant when she disp displaces her mistress. Four things listed, and the reader is challenged to figure out what is common to the four things. In this one, per the Collegeville Commentary, each represents the human stereotypes of arrogance, someone who has gone way past their ability and makes up for it, makes up for their incompetence by being overbearing. So those are some of the literary forms in Proverbs. Aphorism, using poetic parallelism, is the predominant form. Now some of the literary characteristics of the aphoristic form. Four characteristics that I'm going to present are taken from Roland Murphy's The Tree of Life. 
aphorisms are assertive, expressed as an a priori. Something that is a priori, as an a priori statement, is a statement whose truth is self-evident. It doesn't need to be proved. Its truth is a given. There seems to be an authority to the statement. Maybe an easy example is if you say 2 plus 2 equals 4, you might consider that an a priori statement. It's something that you don't need to prove. The second characteristic, an aphorism gives insight that challenges the hearer to go deeper to figure out how to apply it to a specific situation. So for example, from Proverbs 10 verse 12, hatred stirs up disputes, but love covers all offenses. A statement, which is a short pithy statement, an aphorism, that comes across a priori, like it is beyond dispute, but it challenges the reader on exactly how to apply it. How do you love in a way that covers offenses? Another example is from Proverbs 10.19, where words are many, sin is not wanting, but he who restrains his lips does well. Again, it provides insight, but a challenge on how to apply it. Was it, what does it mean to restrain one's lips in a specific situation? And this is also an example of another third characteristic of an aphorism. Sometimes the proverb gives a reversal of what might, what might be expected. So in this example from Proverbs 10.19, if one really is wise, you might expect that more words rather than fewer words would be better to share that wisdom. So another characteristic you see sometime is a reversal of expectations. And the fourth characteristic, they are concise. The definition of an aphorism. The point of the aphoristic form is to give the maximum meaning with minimum words. Now I want to look at some specific sections for next week. The third pillar, the third collection begins with the saying of the wise. The wise one, the sage, tells the reader they will make known the words of Amen M.O.P. And it turns out there is extra biblical wisdom literature from Egypt called the instruction of Amen Amen O.P. dated from as early as 1200 B.C. It is a papyrus written by an Egyptian scribe as instruction to his son consisting of 30 chapters. And there is very clear similarities between the two. The general consensus is that the Proverbs used the instructions of Amen and Mopi as a source. Then, the last collection, Pillar 7, Chapter 31. This collection opens with the words of Lemuel, King of Massa, the advice which his mother gave him. So what we have is the advice that Lemuel's mother, the eventual queen, uh, queen mother, gave to Lemuel as a young man when he was a king-to-be, you might say a king in training. In the first nine verses, he gets three almost standard warnings, the dangers of wine, women, and, well, injustice. So avoid drink because it interferes with good judgment. Restrain your sexual appetite. And... Respect the right of the poor. Exercise justice. This collection and the book of Proverbs ends with 22 verses that are entitled The Ideal Wife, Lemuel's Mother's Advice on Finding a Good Wife. It is an acrostic. Each of the last 22 verses begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. This is often used in Hebrew uh, literature as a memory aid. On the surface, it is a description of a good, perfect wife and the importance of finding a good wife. But it also has a deeper meaning. It is also a personification of wisdom, the Lady Wisdom from Chapter 9. The acrostic begins with, when one finds a wife, and you can read into that, when one finds wisdom, her value is far beyond pearls. And we read in Chapter 31.10, the pearls of wisdom. 
So the challenge is, where do you find a worthy wife, or where do you find wisdom? I propose verse 30, second to the last verse, gives the answer. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Fear of the Lord is the key to finding wisdom. To wrap up our study of Proverbs, I want to go over some unifying themes. Much of Proverbs seems like a hodgepodge collection of independent Proverbs, but there are some common themes that do unify the book. The wise are associated with the just, and are contrasted with the foolish who are associated with the wicked. Wisdom leads to life and prosperity in this life, whereas foolishness leads to ruin and death. The key to wisdom is fear the Lord, and this comes up throughout the book of Proverbs. And wisdom personified as a woman. We met her as Lady Wisdom in chapter 9, and now as the ideal wife in chapter, 20, chapter 31. This concludes my lecture on Proverbs chapter 10 to 31. Next week in lecture 4, we will examine the minor prophet Habakkuk and begin our study of the book of Job. Let's finish within our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.